Welcome to the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast. My name is Rob Murgatroyd, and I am a former doctor turned lifestyle entrepreneur. Each week, I interview some of the best minds on the planet on the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Today's episode is a mini-sode that we call Fried Dates with the Wife. In these mini-sodes, my wife Kim and I deconstruct the strategies that we've developed over the last decade to not only grow personally, but to turn our struggles into lessons and create fulfillment in all areas of our lives. Excuses are over. It's time to live. Let's dig into today's topic. All right, before we jump into this episode, I want to invite you to be considered for my Work Hard, Play Hard Mastermind by completing an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. So this mastermind is not like any mastermind you may have been to or heard of, I promise you. This mastermind is for six to seven figure entrepreneurs that are working too damn much and aren't taking the time to have amazing experiences around the world with an incredible tribe of people. So every 100 days or so, I drop you into new experiences that are specifically designed to elevate your thinking, to give you new ideas. Look, you get your best ideas not staring at a computer. And actually, this is the way high-level people really collaborate with each other. They do it over a glass of champagne, watching the sunset in the south of France. So if you are ready to do some fun stuff around the world and really, really want to level up your tribe in one shot, fill out an application at workhardplayhardmastermind.com. We'll jump on a call and we'll see if it's a good fit. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Kimberly, you're driving me fucking crazy, Murgatroyd, this morning. <laughs> Good morning. Holy shit. We got shit to do. We got to go. Come on. Andiamo. My, so look, here's the thing. Most men wake up in the morning. Feeling like P. Diddy. And they, they need a minute, right? They need a minute. They want to, What do they want to do? They want to get a cup of coffee. God knows. They need to take a shit. They, there's, oh, honey. They do. And they, well, after the coffee. And they, Oh, my they, God. It, Robert. It's what happens. Victor. You want me to lie? Uh, you want truth? You want truth? I'm giving you truth. My wife walks around like a director in a movie. Oh, the fucking squirrel. Look, he's at the, he's at the window. We have a squirrel problem here. No, we do no, not. No, we have a we have That's actually a baby. actually we have a we have a wife feeding the squirrel problem. I really haven't fed the have. squirrel in a long time, and I'm gonna call that one little nuts. My wife because nuts is the big one. My wife wakes up in the morning. She's got uh, headphones and a clipboard on, and she follows me around with a schedule. This is what you need to do. Now, now here's the look. Here's the thing. Uh, says the he, guy who has he, a checklist for brush, the brushing thing. his teeth. This is. Yes. The, and the irony. Yes, I have a schedule, which means my schedule should trump your schedule. Okay, but your schedule only includes you. You know what we're talking about? My schedule Listen. includes the three people that live in this house, including you. All right, I want to tell you what we're talking about today. We're talking about- Oh, you want to change subjects now? No, no, no. We're talking about relationship problems today. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is perfect. Okay? Are you going to share a problem you have with me? I did a post uh, recently and it's all the rage. Seem, people seem to really, really love this post. Judging by the number of comments and messages and likes and blah, 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 I thought it would be a good idea to, to, share, a, to share a couple of these points uh, with you. So yeah, I can't keep my eyes off the fucking squirrel. I hate squirrels and you feed them and they come here every morning. I do morning not and they feed scare them the anymore, but I'm about, I'm about to feed them. You're not feeding the squirrel. I'm, I'm leaving. Okay? You feed the squirrel, I'm leaving. <laughs> it's me or the squirrel. It's me or the squirrel. It's either you. He's going to curl up next to you at night and, and God I... knows what he'll do to you. <laughs> All right. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is- what Well, I'm... let's let's give some background on this, okay? Because we, we don't talk early in our um, Friday date episodes, we talked more about relationship stuff. So if you've listened to some of the earliest episodes, we may to, might have talked about some of these things, but I want to give some background to our relationship and how we kind of came into doing more personal development and how these things have kind of arisen. Is that a, is that a word? I'd go with a rose. Rose? No, no. how these, because it's past tense. Right. Have arisen. Yeah, you're good. Okay, right. good. Christ has arisen, right? He has risen. Okay. I knew you were going to no, go there. See, yeah. It's because I can't. I knew you were going to go you there. You did. 
You're, so, li- you're like you're like a 16 year old boy who can't stop talking about boobs. If there's something, <laughs> if there's some low the hanging, it's the Catholic in me. I low can't. hanging religious fruit. You'll you'll take it. Peace be with you. Yeah, and also with you. <laughs> See, you're trained. We're trained. <laughs> this is the thing. <laughs> we are like monkeys. We are like Catholic monkeys. It's okay. So when we got together, we both came out of a divorce situation. We who was divorced? You. Oh my God. You were stop di- it. you married married before me? <laughs> Robert Victorian. How long were you married? 30 days. <laughs> no, really. How long? 30 days. Yeah, I bet you want to know more. I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. We're not going to tell Literally you. 30 days. She had a 30 day marriage before me. True story. True story. I think, and I, I mean, but was, it was only. Mine was a little longer than 30 days, but yours I, did takes get, the cake. I did get married. No, not the story. Oh. I did get married at the top of the stratosphere in the hotel in Vegas. All right. So, so there you go. We're not my, so, we're not and so mine, perfect. And mine okay? only technically lasted 30 days because that's how long it took Georgia to process the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it really, it was, it was four days if we really look at it. So we both came out of interesting situations. And when we got together, we said that we were going to take, we were not going to get married for two years because you and I could have eloped in six seconds, but we committed to not getting married for two years. And we committed to doing a lot of personal development work together while we were in the honeymoon stage and things were good instead of when shit hit the fan, you know, so when shit hit the fan, we'd have the tools. It's kind of like right now we have Sophia seeing a really great intuitive therapist because I want, not because shit's hitting the fan for her, but I want her to have the tools. So when we do this massive move and she goes into like later stages of life, she has the tools. Is that what we call this living in LA, an intuitive therapist? No, she literally is though. I I had a conversation with her about Sophia's past life. What the hell do you think? Why the fuck do I have to move to LA and have my six-year-old have a fucking intuitive therapist? So uh, sidebar, but it was a full moon the other day. And I said, Sophia, it's a full moon. And she came in and she goes, oh, I got to put my crystals outside so they can recharge. This is really good. (laughs) But anyway, so we did, but this all plays into relationships, right? Because you could, be like, you could be <laughs> mocking me more than you are, but you could be mad about these things or, or not, right? So no, we did because this, I'm mad about you. Right. We did, we committed to doing in our, our heyday of relationship, in the honeymoon period, we committed to doing a lot of personal development together. Do you and know how long it was? How long we, two years? Two years. Yeah. So did we, you say that? I did. I wasn't listening. I know. Thank you. It's the story of my life. But but, I, but here's the great part about a about, about relationship. I accept that about you. So this is part of it. So we did a lot of personal development. So we get lots of comments from our friends that our relationship is like hashtag relationship goals, that people appreciate how we interact with each other. Like, let me give you a situation, mm-hmm. okay? Not to be confused with the situation. Who's now sober? Okay, good. I, I don't give a. You don't follow the Jersey Shore people. I could care less. I, I'm all over Snooky. I know you are because okay. you are basically grew up as Snooky. But <laughs> that's true. You're, that's you're, actually... If you were a drag queen, you would be Snooky. So <laughs> <laughs> let's just say that coming to the Elysium in Mykonos, Snooky Market Ride. Elysium is the only straight friendly hotel. Yeah, it's which a gay is hotel so that's straight funny. friendly. Okay, so let me give you. Let me lay out a situation mm-hmm. and show where this personal development came into play. So I went to Charleston for girls weekend last weekend and my best friend picks me up at the hotel and she's like, okay, can you get us to the restaurant? And so none of us are from there. We don't know where we're going. I'm on the highway. I have maps open and we don't know where we're going. And all of a sudden my phone shuts down and I was like, oh my God, I lost my signal. I was like, what is happening? I lost my signal. What happened? So I look at my friend, Heather, and I was like, do you have a signal? Like, is this like a thing? And she was like, I have a signal. She's like, I have a signal. I'm like, give me your phone. I got to use your phone. And so I'm rebooting my phone because that seems to fix every problem, but it didn't. This and time so it didn't. I re- what, I, what the hell happened? Yeah. What the hell happened was as I'm out of town on a girl's weekend, my husband decided that he was going to get our phones prepped for our August trip to Italy when we're moving there. So what it's, he, what it's he, May. Why did he do that while you were on vacation? While I was on vacation. That makes no sense. Driving down a random highway, don't know where I just am. Just shut your phone off. Just shut my phone off. And I couldn't get a signal, couldn't get it back on. I had no way of doing I it. I would have been so fucking pissed. <laughs> so. What did you do? 
<laughs> I love how you're playing a different role in well, this. Well, what did you do? You're like Robin. I'm uh, Mandy Murphy. I'm playing eight characters. You playing, are. You're playing characters. All, all characters. <laughs> so I used my friend's phone to navigate, first of all. And then once we were felt safe. But what did your friend say? She must have been pissed. Hold on there, Morty. So we're driving and I was like, okay, I'm going to use your phone to text Rob. So I texted you, Robert. And I was like, okay, so my phone doesn't have a signal and I can't fix it. It, I don't know what to do. Did he know? He said, I'm on the phone with T-Mobile right now. I was changing your phone and adding an Italian SIM card. Right while you were on vacation. While I was on vacation with my friends day one. And I, so I read this to my friend and she looked at me like, are you kidding Oh, me? you're going to kill him, right? Yeah. Like, like we need, like, are, this would piss me off. And I said, okay. So I sent him back a message and I was like, okay, so when will it work? And he's like, I'm on the phone right now. We're getting it fixed. And so I continued on with my day. My friend was blown away by one, the fact that I wasn't screaming at him and that I was okay, like functioning. She said, I don't understand how you are not calling him right now and freaking out on him. And like, you're literally traveling. He shuts your phone off. It's not turning back on. And it was off for like a good hour, maybe, right? And if I was by myself, this would have been a really big issue. If I was just like walking around Charleston or driving myself, but thank God I had a friend with a phone. And I said, you know what? She said, how do you remain calm? How have you not yelled at him? Like I would have, this would have been World War III in my house. And I said, it's simple. I said, I'm looking at the situation and how often is this going to happen? Like what is there, is this going to repeat in the future? Is there a chance of repetitive behavior here? Is he going to shut my phone off because he's changing it for another country often? No. He's trying to, I know my husband, he probably got, and I told her this, I say, he probably got a message from someone that said, this is what you do to prep your phone for Italy. And because he has open loop syndrome where he has to, when he, as soon as he gets information, he has to execute until completion or else he can't sleep that night. I know this about him. So I know that that's what he's going through. I also know he probably didn't know this was going to shut my phone off and that he is actively trying to fix it. So what's the point of me yelling at him? Like, what's the point of me? Like, I think he probably figures out that I'm not happy with the situation. Why do I have to do it? So we go on. He sends me the instructions on how to get my phone to work. And I follow the instructions. It works. And then he sends me a voice message. Oh no, this was your instructions in the voice message. The voice message opened with, hey Kim, I know that this is really inconvenient and I promise I did not know this was gonna happen and I apologize and you can yell at me later, but here's how you turn on the phone. And like my friend heard it and she was like, how did he, I was like, right, he preemptively <laughs> calmed my ass down just in case and gave me the instructions to fix my phone. And she was blown away by the fact that I didn't kill you because I think most people would have killed you, right? I think most people would have killed me. I think most people would have killed I, you. But, but I, would, I would have been an innocent spouse as the, <laughs> I, as the IRS <laughs> says here. I, I don't know about innocent. I think, I mean, I think, you know, listen, should you fuck around with your wife's phone while she's on vacation? What's the answer to that? I didn't. I didn't actually know I was fucking around with the phone. Is is the? Uh, I think is, you just owed our uh, the, six year old money. Uh, we're not allowed to curse in front of the six year old. You got the pre frame right. here. So let's now go through. So my point is, we've done the personal development in relationships specifically to understand each other and allow each other to be each other. That was a lot of each other's, and we have tools that help facilitate that. And that's where this came from. We didn't just like magically come up with random shit. We have done personal development across multiple different platforms and And, and there, there's tons of them that are out there. I mean, the one, like if you're, if you're in the market for uh, improving your relationship, which I think you all should be, because if you want to have a great life, you got to have a great wife. There's just no way. Thank around, you. I, you know, have a great relationship with a great wife because there's, there's no way around it. If you have a bad relationship, it affects everything. It affects your workouts. I mean, yeah. like everything. Takes, takes two to tango though. So you got to both be on board. Everything is affected by it. And so this post that I wrote was more around, we've gotten really, really good at, uh, if I do say so myself, we've gotten really good at crafting a vision together. 
as a couple and going after the vision together. And it was not easy for us in the beginning because in the beginning, our relationship was- our Tainted abili- by previous relationships. No, yeah, but that's not what I mean. Our ability to, you know, when bands get together and they and they do great work, there's a synergistic thing, right? They just, they meet each other and they do great work. But then over time, you know, one person wants to go down this road and the other one wants to go down the other road and then they split for artistic differences. And that happens a lot in relationships too because they don't figure out how to navigate. Yeah, but I want that. No, but I want that, right? And the ability to be able to do that, frankly, is a skill set. And we learned a lot of it from Tony Robbins. We learned a lot of it from uh, John Gottman's uh, work or the Gottman's, him and his wife, Julie, Gottman Julie and John Gottman's. Yeah, yep. uh, they're out of Seattle. We'll tag it up in the show notes. But prior to putting these things in place, our ability to be able to dream together and cast a vision together and go through breaking through the walls together to accomplish the vision has been pretty compromised. And now that we've got these things dialed in, in a way that Kim just described with the opening story, we've preemptively dealt with a lot of, you know, issues around, you know, what does that look like? So, you know, I can give you a ton of examples about us moving to California, how we did that, ton of examples about us moving to Italy, about how we did that. But when I think about them, there's probably, I don't know, maybe 10 different principles that we operate from. So I'm just gonna go through three of them today because I think they're probably the ones that we use most. And I think there'll be the, they'll be the ones that are most actionable immediately for you. So the first one, is what I'm now calling, what do you want from me? And uh, which I thought was a great thing. So I want to fix problems. And I think it's a, it's a great skill set to be able to fix a problem, right? You got a problem, you want to fix it. The problem with guys, I think, in this area is because no guy wants to see their girl hurting or frustrated or mad. They just want to go out and fix it. The problem is sometimes a woman wants something to be fixed and sometimes she doesn't. And we're fucking Helen, to use Tony Robbins, this is him, we're Helen Keller, we're deaf, dumb and blinds, okay? We cannot figure out what they want. So in an effort to solve that, it's a very simple fix. You ask this question, honey, do you want me to fix this or do you want me to just listen? And 50% of the time, it'll be like, no, I need you to fucking fix this. I mean, this is not okay. I don't actually say it like that. Or the other 50% of the time, it would be, I'm going to say something funny in a minute. Uh, The other- other, You're going to tell me you're saying something funny. So you're setting yourself up for your own joke. No, Seinfeld, Seinfeld, Seinfeld does this. Every woman, when she reiterates what a man sounds like, not what you just, not what I said you sound like. Seinfeld says that every time a woman says that a guy says something, he always talks like this guy. So the girl, I'll I'll give you the example. The girl will will say, and then you said to me, well, I don't want to do that. (laughs) And then he looks, he's like, I've never spoken that way before. I don't know what, what, who is this guy? And every girl makes the same sound for their husband. We can't, (laughs) I can't believe that you said that. No, nobody talks like, anyway. Anyway, so so you ask me, do you want me to fix it or do you want me to listen? Yeah, and half half of the time she's like, I want you to fix it. And the other half of the time she's like, no, 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 no. I just, I just, honestly, I just need you to listen to me. Yeah, and I that actually is super helpful for me because when you're dealing with human beings, it doesn't matter if it's male or female, there's logical side and there's an emotional side. And when you're talking to the emotional side, the emotional side typically wants you to listen. The logical side is looking for a solution. And this has actually really helped me in friendships because my number one strengths, like my one, two, and three strengths are all action-based. They're strategy, they're coming, ideation, coming up with basically solutions. And so in my friendships with other women, specifically for me, 
I will ask them, like if they come to me with an issue, I'm like, do you want me to just listen or do you want me to help find a solution? Because I'm the friend that the girl just calls me to vent. And I'm like, here's what you got to do. And my most of my friends have figured that out by now. So they pretty much only call me when they want a solution because I, I'm not the one to vent to because I want to fix shit. But that's helped me in my friendships as well. So that's a good, if you lean to be that type of person where you're wanting to fix things, asking that question, do you want me to fix it? Or do you just want me to listen is really helpful. And, you know, initially I think I want you to listen sometimes, but then I roll over to wanting you to help me fix it. And sometimes it's, un okay, so the more you do this, the better you get at being able to discern whether or not she wants you to listen or fix it. That does come over time where I'm like, it's clear that she needs me to fix this. Like it's, it's like, I can now hear the words that she's saying and go, oh, she needs this thing fixed. And sometimes I don't even need to ask. Other times she doesn't know what she wants. Mm -hmm. She's just upset. And so she's going off and I have to let her run out of steam to be able to figure out where is she going with this. But if I don't have like, I'm 90% sure. But if you bring solutions in the middle of my emotional rant, then my rant gets worse. Throwing logic at emotion never helps anybody. The next two are going to be one from column A and one from column B. One for the men and one for the women. The one for the man is going to be, we learned this one from Tony Robbins. Men want to go into nothingness. So allow me to take you down a quick road here for a second. When a man is having uh, sex, it's boom, 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 and then pass out, right? He wants to go into like crazy aggression and then gone, right? Asleep. When a man comes home at the end of the day, he wants the remote control. He doesn't want to talk to anybody. He wants to flip the channels. When a guy's playing football, he wants to knock down the player in front of him and run into the football end zone and go into freedom, nothingness. So we are wired to slay the dragon and go into nothingness. Well, at the end of the day, when you come home- It's part of decompressing. It's part of decompressing. At the end of the day, we hit a point where our bandwidth is so full that we're done. We don't have any more words. We don't want to tell any stories. We don't want to listen to any stories. And there's a refractory period where we need to decompress. And we do that by going into nothingness. And so the understanding of that, when Kim sees in my eyes that I am fried and I need a minute, the last thing that I want to happen when I walk in the door is, you know, her saying, you know, this is what happened with the kid today. Did you return this? Did you go here? Did you do that? Because I'm shot. So when she sees that in any situation, whether it's the end of the day or it's after a long Zoom or if it's a, you know, a busy morning of coaching, whatever it is, she recognizes that I've got to hit that release valve and go into nothingness. So if she sees me you know, drooling in the corner or reaching for a book or putting my earbuds in, she's recognizing, oh, he needs to go into nothingness. And she knows that once I come out of nothingness, the refractory period's over and I'm, I'm good. I'm ready to go. Whether I do a new calm session, Google that, it's worth it. Or I read a book and there are times when she will, because I won't do it myself, there are times where she'll say to me, go out on the deck, close the door and take 20 minutes because she sees that I need it. Yeah. So this was actually much more of an issue. I mean, this is straight up lifestyle design right here. Because when you were working in the clinic, like from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., treating patients, and then you come home dealing with putting out whatever fires of the day, and you would come home, our older daughter was younger at the time, obviously, and you would walk in the door say hello to everybody. And then you would put your stuff down, wash up, and you would go out on the deck. And I would close the door. I'd bring you a cocktail or a glass of wine. And I would stop the little one, the older one, Demi, at this age, from going out there immediately. And I would say, give your dad 15 minutes, let him decompress, let him read a book, let him just handle his stuff, and then he'll be ready for us. And I'd make dinner and she would play. And then 
when the door opened (laughs) to the deck, we knew it was okay to go. And I did the best I could to protect that space for you because I knew you would be a better father and a better husband once you got through that 15 minute, 20 minutes of decompression that you needed. Now you've set your life up different. You've designed your life where work is done by one, and then you take three or four hours to work out, meditate, ride your bike, go for a walk, and you come in in a different headspace than you used to. So I don't actually have that like need to, to do that. And so you usually come home ready to talk to Sophia or me or whatever. There are days though where like when you're on the phone, you're, you know, your workout gets cut short and you spend your workout time on the phone putting out problems and issues with different businesses that we have. And you come home and you're like, it's been a day and you grab the bottle of wine in your headphones and you go out on the back and I don't even see you. And that's when I know, like you have 17 books on Italy, a glass of wine in your earbuds in, and you do that for 15 minutes. And then you usually come back and you get me a glass, (laughs) you know? And so I let that happen. But I do have friends that when their husband goes out on the back deck with a glass of wine or whatever, they're pissed about it. And they're like, I've been home all day with the kids. And he comes home and he just goes and sits on the back deck and why I've been with the kids all day and what the hell and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, do you not see like that he would be better if you just let him do that and you actually campaigned for him to do that, allowed him to decompress, then he can be come back and be full because, you know, women have an interesting thing, right? We talk about, you're talking about emptying for the man women consistently talking about, we got to fill our cup. That is point number three. This is the one that's, I'll let Kim explain this. This is the one that's going to go into the female category. So in the same way that you saw, you know, when a man hits an emotional flooding standpoint where he's like, can't take another minute, just give me the time to decompress. Well, woman has the exact opposite. She wants to fill up. Right. And so the verbiage that, you know, you and I have been talking about this for a decade. Women, men need to empty, women need to fill up. We like lots of little things. We like extra pillows, little furry, I like pillows have fur on them and, and flip-flops. I have a dog on my lap right now. Like we like babies, dogs, furry things, you know, pillows, little things everywhere. Now the verbiage people use is I got to fill my cup up so I can pour from it. And that's literally what we've been talking about for a decade Filling that cup includes a lot of things. We fill up with our kids, with our animals, with our friends, with self-care, you know, with exercise and all of these things help us to fill our cup. And Rob is so good at this one. When he sees that I'm running my business, doing school with Sophia, uh, having challenges in you know in whatever area of life I'm having, not getting time to work out. Maybe I'm doing more meetings than usual or whatever. He'll come to me and say, "Why don't you go for a walk? Why don't you go and take an hour and just go for a walk? Or why don't you? I'll take the kid. I'll go to the park. And why don't you do something for you? Like not let me take her so you can work. But he'll. Why don't you go go do a meditation? Go do a new calm meditation and go for a walk." do something for yourself. And he's really good about that because he knows that's what I need to be able to fill my cup and give myself that personal care. Maybe it's a bath, maybe it's a massage or whatever, but he's really good at identifying when I need that. And that filling of the cup for me has changed over the years. What fills it up? You know, at first we we joked about it was like the furry dog and all the things, but now it's more things like meditation and consistent meditation and going for really long walks and listening to an audiobook that has nothing to do with business or you know a conversation or a girls night out with a friend you know those things fill my cup so i can be a better mom a better wife for my family and for myself and just be a better human altogether so men and the way that they want to decompress and, and go into nothing like men could listen to nothing <laughs> you could listen to whales mating and be totally happy right women we want to have people around us often, or sometimes we want to be by ourselves, but 
that actually is filling up our cup and allowing us to be better. Yeah, I mean, it's look, I use the example of sex with guys, right? Because I'm a guy and I can't help uh, oh talking God. about sex. But if you look at sex the with woman, women- Yes, the woman gets like filled she's up. She's literally getting filled up, right? And when she has a baby, she's literally filling up you know, her belly. But, so, it's, not, so but are, it's not about, no, we're gonna fight for the microphone. No, I'm gonna, no, no, I'm I'm gonna, gonna I wanna tell you about women. No. Just hold on a no. second. Listen, you're a man. I, but it doesn't matter. No. I know, I understand women at oh a deeper God. level than I think you do. I, I'm just- I'm just stating a fact. I think about the depth of knowledge that I have on women. I mean, it's impressive. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. So my point was going to be that, yes, you have to fill up your own cup and you have to take responsibility for doing your own self-care. But in a relationship, if you can identify when your partner needs it, if you can have the sensory acuity to pick up on the, the clues and not necessarily the words. If you can see your wife is frustrated and overwhelmed, nudge her to do something for herself. Take care of business at home and allow her to go do something that fills up her cup. Nudge her to do that. That ability to see in your partner their need is what creates a great relationship. The same on the other side. If your husband is coming home and he's exhausted, Yes, you've been with the kids all day, but give him 15 minutes to chill the fuck out so he can come back and be a better man. And will it be equal at first? May, are you gonna be giving him more time than he's giving you or blah, blah, blah? Yeah, it might not be equal, but that's okay. Not everything has to be 50-50 all the time and give you one more damn thing to fight about. Allow it to flow. And when different people are in different seasons of life, they might need different things, but have enough sensory acuity in yourself to identify that in your partner. Do I have your permission to say the B word to make a point? No. I can't even make a point with the B word? No. Why not? I don't think, there's no reason. It's, there, it's there's gonna, no, it, there's no, no, it's gonna no. help. It's gonna help, it's it's not, gonna help men. I, it's you don't gonna, wanna help men right now? I use a different word. Mm, can't, it's not gonna work. Okay, keep your point to yourself. Okay. Um, DM me if you want to know what my thought is there. Okay. So the last one is I am not dying on that hill. So. See, you just didn't die on the B word hill. This is a great segue. Yeah. I just, it's not, it's not worth it. So I have an amazing point that I think would help millions and millions of men. You could do that privately in your but social she media. But she doesn't. See, see, I knew that it would be offensive to her. So I asked for permission. Therefore offensive to any female listening to this podcast. That's why I asked for it. Nobody can get offended if you ask if, you, if they're willing. So you said no, so I didn't do it. This is my point. I'm not willing to die on the B hill, right? I could sit here right now and say like, no, 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 but this is gonna be, this is, you gotta let me do it. Or, or I could have just said it, but now I'm not willing to die on the hill. What does that you mean? Don't, so- Explain that. Okay. We are going to have, just as we just did with the uh, with the B letter word. By the way, if this was a video podcast, they would see my eyes. You remember cartoons where the <laughs> eyes would pop out of the head? How many times do my eyes pop out of my head in a given podcast? Like if you, you might not hear it exactly in my voice or you do, but if you saw my eyes when he was about to say that word, they literally popped out of my head and smacked him across the face if we were Tom and Jerry. That's well, what happened there. You know what these people want? Let me tell you what they want. Okay, can I tell you what they want? They want honesty. Right. They want real. They right. want raw. They don't want any canned bullshit. They no. want this, because they need, they need help to live their life. Right. We're trying to help them. Okay, dying on the hill. Don't want to die on that hill. So Kim and I, throughout any given day, will have a plethora of things that we could fight for three hours about if we wanted to, Right. Right. We have a family and three businesses. <clears throat> We're there, good. <laughs> we could, you know, you've heard the term pick and choose your battles, right? This goes on many, many times throughout the day. I am at the age now, and listen, 20-year-old people who are married, 30-year-old people who are married, listen to a fool, okay? I'm going to give you good advice here. Unless it really fucking matters, where it's a big deal. On a scale of one to 10, changing your life, it's a 10, if somebody else is more passionate about it and there's not, you know, it's just not worth it, go their way. Just say, okay, I go your way. Because in the end, they may be seeing something that you haven't seen. Don't look at it as you're being, you know, a, a pacifist or being a pushover or just being bulldozed. That's just your ego. Like if somebody else is like, no, I don't, just let it go. 
let it go and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go your way on this one and just move on. There are very, very few hills that I'm willing to die on. And let me tell you what this does. This, when you are not pushing back against it the other way, and when the other person knows you want to, then the other person, before they dig their feet in, they're not going to have any reason to dig their feet in. So now they're left on their own for their idea. You're giving it to them. They're like, this is how I think it should be done. You're like, okay, well, now they have to stand on their own two feet, right? So you're not pushing back, questioning any of it so that they're spending all of their time trying to hold their ground and dig their feet in and prove their point. Now you're just giving it to them. So I am no longer, unless it's something that is, that I just feel so passionately about. And you don't get to feel so passionately about everything. Yeah, you can't, you don't get, you don't get passion about the trash, about the pickup drop-off situation, about uh, everything in the world that goes on in your life, right? You don't get to be a 10 on everything. No, you gotta, you gotta pick and choose it. It's, it's not worth it. So you just, you let it go. And that's what we say too. Like Rob will come and say, okay, so we'll talk about something and he'll go, this one's a 10 for me. And when he says, this one's a 10 for me, then I don't die on the hill. I might disagree. I might be able to give guidance and influence him in some way. But if something is a 10 for him, then I step out of the way and he, I don't die on that hill. I'm not fighting that But then it becomes a little boy who cried wolf if everything's a 10. Right. So it can't be, not everything can be a 10 for you. There has to be some balance in that. But between he and I being able to say like, this is incredibly important to me and I'm not going, like this isn't going to work in our relationship. Like I'll give you an example. We struggled with the idea of having a second kid. And it was really hard to make that decision because I wanted it. He was like, I'm 105. Like I, I'm, the, I, what were you? Like 49 when we had Sophia, yeah. like or 48. He was like, I, God, this is like really old. I'm going to be 900 when she graduates high school. And it, that was hard for us. But we hit a point where I was like, this is actually a 10 for me. And this is one of those things where I will die on this hill, <laughs> you know. And he, that was a tough one because it was like a it was like a nine. It was probably was, an eight, eight, eight or a nine for me, right? And the so, op, but the opposite, the opposite. And so that was a really hard one. And that was that. I mean, that actually took years of conversation to be able to get to a point where we were willing to make a decision. But through that, it wasn't a fight. It was an. It, it was. I mean, there probably were some fights in there, but there was. It was more influencing. But once it became a ten out of ten for me, to the point of which, like, I was going to get a surrogate. I was like, I'm. I'm doing this with or without you. What do you want? Then it was like, okay, I'm not going to die on that hill. But there's one more that is not on your list that I think is insanely important in a relationship. And you know, we've probably talked about this before, but allowing the other person to be who they are. And this is one of those things like I see in my friends' relationships where they're trying to like change their husband or change some character, not character, but some thing about him. And, you know, trying to make him do something a different way. And Rob and I, in the beginning, I think, did normal relationship shit. Like, why do you do it that way? And like, why don't you just think about it this way? And like those kinds of things. But we are so good at allowing each other to be each other. I will never, ever in a million years, he couldn't send me to a class. He couldn't hire me a coach. He couldn't do anything for me to be as neat and tidy as he is. I came home from Charleston. My suitcase sat on the floor, unpacked with like clothes hanging out of it for four days. He didn't leave me. <laughs> he didn't scream at me. He didn't even mention it. When I mentioned it to him, because I know his level of tidiness, I was busy. I was prioritizing other things. That was not top of my priority list. It would have been the top of his, but it wasn't the top of mine. And he, I finally said, Rob, I know this drives you nuts and I'm going to pick it up tomorrow and I'm going to get it organized. And he was like, dude, I don't know how you do that for three days. But it was a joke. You know, he made a joke out of it. He didn't make me wrong for it. There was no like, when the hell are you going to unpack? Like none of that. I will never, ever, 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 ever be as neat as him. 
he will do the dishes. If he sees one dish in the thing and he's late 15 minutes for appointment, he will put on the effing gloves and, and clean that dish before he goes. That's him. That's just who he is. And he takes ownership of the tidiness level that he expects in the house because it's his expectation. So he gets to follow through. Whereas again with Sophia, I was the one that was like, all in on Sophia. So I take the brunt of the work there because I know that my expectation was to have a kid, raise a kid and do all these things with a kid. And so I take the brunt of the work with that. You're an amazing dad and you spend great time with her and you're hysterical with her and you love her and you do all of it. But I do the brunt of it because that was my thing, right? That's my thing that I brought in here. When we were in Charleston and you shut my phone off, I knew immediately it was open loops syndrome. And that I, this is a disorder that you can't help. And sometimes this disorder works in our favor because it gets shit done. And sometimes it works against us. But either way, there is no way that I could ever, 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 ever change open loop syndrome. All right. So we'll leave you, we'll leave you with this. You'll see that this is not easy. It's not our default level of thinking. It requires work. Yeah. It required us banging our heads against the wall. So it required we, us to do the work and to see the problems. It, it's almost like when you yeah. see somebody with a great body, you know, and you're like, must be nice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, that's incredible. Like, you know, how did you do that? And like, you know, the answer is, do you really fucking want to know? Right. Do you want to know all the cupcakes I said no to? Do you want to know those, the sweat sessions in the gym and lifting weights, you know, where I like, I threw my shoulder out for three months because I pushed too hard. By the way, they're always the person that when you and I are sitting on a Tuesday, having like a glass of rosé and a chocolate chip cookie, that they're jogging by us. <laughs> it's exactly, you know what I mean? Perfect. Like the, perfect. <laughs> so that. if you see us and, and look and say, oh, this is, you know, the used to, you, you Relationship two- Relationship goals. God, my New York came out there. I said, used to. Um, you two are- Used to? Use, oh, you Like to. use Oh two. God, that's not a word. <clears throat> I know, it's not a word. And you see, and you're like, oh God, that, you know, the, they got, they got lucky. I mean, they, they found, yeah, there's some luck there for sure. There's some divine intervention yeah, there for sure. I would call it divine. But we also do the work. It is not easy when I look down uh, on my- the floor and I see her luggage for four days and I'm like in my head screaming, why the fuck does she not pick up that luggage? <laughs> How can she trip over it? Not for a day, but for four days. <laughs> How can she do that? So it takes the wherewithal to go, I'm not going to die in that hill. It's not that fucking important. So the point is the work is within me. It is. And then the thing that makes all of this easier is laughter. When you can look and identify the things in yourself that are not great and laugh about them or the things that aren't what your partner would do and laugh about them, it makes it all easier. Because if he came at me with some suitcase, you know, shit with his like military suitcase, pick that shit up, then it wouldn't work out for me. All right. Now, before we go, can I, uh, can I say the big word now? No. That's it, everybody. Have a great week and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. All right, thanks for listening. If you love this episode and you know someone that needs some help in either stepping up their work hard game or their play hard game, it would mean the world to me if you shared this podcast with them to help me get this movement out there. So if you like what you heard, head on over to iTunes, take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and I will be forever grateful. So until the next episode, excuses are over. It's time to live.